Hello everybody, this is Miss Segovia and we're going to talk about enzymes, the helper protein molecules. We know that there's a big flow of energy through all things on life. In fact, you're built on a series of chemical reactions. We all know the sun provides the energy that helps the plants grow, which the animals eat, but then we'll have our big predators come through and eat the animals that ate the plants. So how is it that lion is able to get the energy that originally came from the sun? Well, we have a whole bunch of chemical reactions that fuel our processes of life. Some of those are used to build molecules, our synthesis reactions, and then we also have ones that break down molecules, our digestion reactions. Nothing, though, can work without enzymes. Enzymes are little helper molecules that allow everything to take place, things to break apart, things to get put together. They build our molecules in those synthesis reactions. There'll be a little enzyme in there that helps them come together. And molecules will also break down with the help of our enzymes. If we didn't have enzymes, it'd be almost impossible for things to bond or to be broken down. In fact, these enzymes also help to speed things up. This word is known as catalysts. Catalysts are little uh, things that make things go faster. We cannot live without those enzymes. So there are two types of reactions. Our synthesis reactions are also known as anabolic reactions. You might have heard of the term anabolic before being referred to as steroids. So you can kind of remember it with anabolic steroids, a big bodybuilder guy with tons of muscles. So we're building, we're putting together. Enzymes help those anabolic reactions take place. With our other reactions, digestion reactions, they're known as catabolic reactions. Catabolic reactions are the breaking down. I like to think of this as if you have a little pet cat and a beautiful sofa, your cat just shredding that sofa into little tiny pieces. Again, enzymes help do this. Now you'll notice in each of the animations that the enzyme went away. So where did it go? Well, it's off to do another job. Enzymes don't get used up in our chemical reactions. They don't get changed. They're only used temporarily and then they move on and do the same reaction again and again and again and again and again. You don't need a whole lot of enzymes to get stuff done because one enzyme can go around and do multiple reactions. So when we talk about enzymes, we're going to use some key vocabulary. We have substrates, our little materials that help to break things down. On our enzymes, we have an active site, and when everything is all said and done, we have a product. So I'm going to have you guys make this little foldable right here. This is made using the window pane fold, where you fold two pieces of paper in and then make little slits. If you're not sure how to do this fold, see your teacher see, or see the example that's up on the front table. But I'm going to show you what to put on each of the four panels. On panel one, we're going to have the lock and key model, and you're going to see up here are two substrates, which are A and B. Um, with these, you can make them any color you want, but yellow and blue is probably best, and I'll show you why in a minute. We're going to draw our enzyme like this little guy right here in red, and notice we label enzyme and we label active site. The active site is the area where our two substrates are going to bond. In panel two, we can show our two substrates coming together, our little locking key right there, and um, have them locking into our enzyme. In panel three, on the bottom left, we have the product A and B. Now you'll notice the color of product A and B here is green, because if you know your primary colors, yellow and blue make green. And then in panel four, the enzyme is unchanged and ready for the next reaction. So we go back to having our little red enzyme with its active site open and ready to go. And that is how you do the outside of this foldable. So let's look at some enzyme vocabulary again. We have the enzyme, a protein that is a biological catalyst, substrate, the things reacting in a reaction, the reactants, and our active site, the place on an enzyme where substrates come together to react. These three definitions I want you to put on the back side of the first panel. Feel free to pause this at any time too so you can see the vocabulary or to go back so you can read the typed version versus my sloppy handwriting. 
On the second panel, I want you to put the lock and key model. Substrate and enzymes have complementary shapes. They fit together like a lock and key, and each enzyme catalyzes only one type of reaction. One lock equals one key. Remember, catalyze is a term used when we're talking about speeding up reactions. You might have a catalytic converter on your car that helps it run a little bit smoother. Same deal. So here's our lock and key. Again, we start out with the active site of our enzyme being available. Our substrate comes in and bonds with the active site and then something happens with the substrate. In this case, we're breaking the substrate into two products. Sometimes we'll be putting it together, depending upon the type of reaction. With enzymes, it's really important that the shape of the enzyme be consistent with our substrate. That's our lock and key, key component. Um, if it wasn't the correct shape, our substrate wouldn't be able to fit into that active site and we wouldn't be able to break it apart or put them together. It's specific for each reaction. One enzyme has one job. You'll never have a multi-talented enzyme. They are made for one single purpose. So let's talk a little bit about what affects the way an enzyme works. We have temperature, whether it's too hot or too cold, pH, whether it's acidic or basic, and inhibitors, which are imposters that fit into the enzyme and take the substrate place. So we're going to look at those a little bit closer right here. So first off is the order of amino acids being very important. We have those chain of amino acids that come together and will form our enzyme. Remember that enzymes are proteins, and so we'll fold it into a very specific shape. If there is a mutation in our DNA and that chain of amino acids changes order, even if it's just one thing, you can see here our red dots and blue dots are just a little different, it will change the shape of our enzyme. And when we have a shape change, we change the function of the enzyme. And in most cases, it will no longer work. The wrong order is the wrong shape and it can't do its job. So with temperature, we have kind of a similar thing happening here. Um, optimum temperatures will have our enzymes working perfectly and they'll do really, really great. With humans, our optimum temperature is usually about 37 degrees Celsius and so you'll see between 35 and 40 most of your enzymes function. But if you raise that temperature to boiling, you end up changing the shape of your protein. And so it's called denaturing. It unfolds the protein and it won't work correctly. If we have the temperature too cold, those molecules will start to move slower and they don't bump into each other as quickly and it just takes more time. That's why you could put your food in the fridge and it takes a while for it to decompose because the enzymes that do the decomposing are moving very slowly. And you have fewer collisions between enzymes and substrate. So if you're looking at it on the graph, here we have the optimum temperature for humans. You'll see our reaction rates usually peak at about that. And so at the top of our little uh, hill right here, that would be our optimum temperature. With pH, we can also see some effects in the enzyme activity because the change in pH can sometimes change the protein shape. Most human enzymes work between six and eight because that's where our body normally lies. There are a few exceptions though, such as the stomach, which can have a pH of three, your small intestines, which can be as high as a pH of eight. And so when we see these, we'll see some different ones. With our, um, most enzyme will operate around seven, like we see here with the red line. But with our stomach, we have an enzyme there called pepsin that works down at a pH of about 2.5. In your intestines, again, we'll see pH of 8. And so it just depends upon the enzyme where it normally um, lives and the function that it has as to what its optimums may be. But if I, if I were to take that red enzyme and move it down into the stomach, it would denature and fall apart, and that would make it non-functional. So enzymes are proteins. They're specific to each specific reaction. We have to have that correct shape. I can't emphasize that enough, the right shape for the right job. When we name enzymes, we usually name them for the reaction they help with. So sucrase breaks down sucrose, proteases break down proteins, lipases break down lipids, and DNA polymerase builds DNA. So anytime you see that ace, we're usually talking about an enzyme. Pretty cool, huh? 
So on the back of panel four, I want you to put some examples of enzymes and underline that ACE. So you can list these six if you want, amylase, catalase, cellulase, lactase, sucrase, and protease, or if you have other favorite enzymes, you can add those to the back as well. So let's kind of sum this up and review and talk about enzyme characteristics. And I want you to put this in the center panel. First off, enzymes are reusable. Enzymes are specific, one lock for one key. Enzymes lower activation energy of the reaction. Enzymes help make materials cell need. And enzymes break down molecules and release energy. So, if you followed along with this whole presentation, you now should have all the information you need for your little foldable. If you need to go back to any parts, feel free to do so or come up to my desk and take a look at the original. Thank you for your time.